In this section, we're finding the derivative by a method called implicit differentiation, and you can see your steps written here. It's, an impo it's important to note that every time you take the derivative of a y term, you have to insert a dy dx term in there. So here we go. Here's our first one. I ask you to find dy dx for this particular equation. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of 4x cubed would be 12x squared. Okay, so that should be pretty easy. So when I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, I don't have to do any extra part. Now my next part, if I take this derivative of y, I get negative 6y squared. But since I took the derivative of y, I have to take the derivative of y with respect to x. So you need to throw that dy dx factor in there. And this, of course, would equal 1 because the derivative of x is 1. So take a moment to look at this. When I took this first term, that was the derivative of x, so I didn't need any extra factors in there. When I took the derivative of this x, that was just an x term. I didn't need any derivative, any extra factors in there. But since this one took the derivative of y, I had to put a dy dx factor in there. So that's how we start, and that's what you're doing with these. You just have to remember, every time you take the derivative of y, put a dy dx in there. So the next thing you're going to do is you're actually going to solve this equation out for dy dx. That means I need to move the 12x over. So negative 6y squared dy dx would equal 1 minus 12x squared. To solve for dy dx, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6y squared. So dy dx would actually equal 1 minus 12x squared over negative 6y squared. And that's my answer. Okay, let's try another one. When I take the derivative with respect to x, I'm going to get 3y squared dy dx minus 1 dy dx plus 6x squared, no dy dx there, minus 1, no dy dx there, equals 0. Now let's look at that. So for the first one, I used my basic power rule, and I brought the 3 down, 3y squared. Since I took the derivative of y, I needed a dy dx thrown in there. For the second term, that's a negative y. That's a linear term. Remember, its derivative is just the coefficient. So the coefficient there would be negative 1. Since it was a dy dx, sorry, a y term, I threw a dy dx in there. My next one's a regular power rule for x. Bring your 3 down, that gives me a 6. Decrease the power by 1, 6x squared. For the fourth term, I have a linear term. Remember to take its coefficient, which is negative 1. And on the end, 8 is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, I need to solve this out for dy dx. So let's leave this uh, group alone and move everything over. So the 6x squared moves over and the 1 moves over. So 3y squared dy dx minus 1 dy dx would equal negative 6x squared, when it moves over it changes signs, plus 1. Now if you read through your steps, it says make sure you differentiate with respect to x, which we did on the first line. 
it says make sure every derivative of any term involved derivative of a y, you throw a dy dx in there. Okay, so that's what we did there. Move all dy dx terms to one side, which is what we did in the third line. And here's the next step. It says factor out the dy dx if necessary. So both of these had a dy dx term, so I can take that out, and that leaves me with 3y squared minus 1. To get dy dx by itself, all I have to do is divide by that part, divide by that factor, and dy dx would equal negative 6x squared plus 1, 3y squared minus 1. 